I have now finished Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I have some thoughts. Now, this video may at times sound incredibly negative because I am a Final Fantasy VII super fan. I've not only beaten the game about a hundred different times, but I've played it on every single system. Every time they remaster or re-release or add some sort of new tiny feature, I've played every release of it on Steam, on consoles, digitally on my PSP, including all the special weird stuff like the sequels, of course the remake, Intergrade, and even did stuff like tracked down the Final Fantasy VII books which let me tell you some of them are good a lot of them are kind of terrible so when i speak about ff7 i say it with a place of extreme love this is objectively my favorite game of all time so they're currently in the process of remaking it as a trilogy the first one remake was a very good time i very much loved it except for the rather chaotic ending and with rebirth this has got to be the most expansive deep insane final fantasy of all time and i definitely say that as a person who knows what they're talking about Final Fantasy is what pushed me to create this channel. It's what pushed me to actually figure out how video games are made, how this art medium continues to evolve. So when I say that Rebirth is bigger and better than maybe anything I've ever seen in the past, I truly mean it. But let's get into the goods and the bads because as much as I enjoyed my 60 hour playthrough of this, certain aspects of it, I did not enjoy. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dreamcast Guy, and if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So, this has been a very efficient playthrough. At this point, I've played, you know, like I just said, almost 60 hours of it, and this was with the purpose of attempting to reach the ending credits. So because of it, while I did do a lot of exploration, while I played some cards and did some side quests, for the most part, this was an objective-based playthrough. I wanted to see the ending. So while I have played over 50 hours of it just so thoroughly, I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface. This game is jaw-droppingly big. There is so many different spots that you can get lost in, hidden objectives, side content galore, and all of it just feels so rewarding, so fun, so lore pertinent. Okay, so I wanna break this video down into separate chunks talking about the gameplay, the story, and then I kind of, in a very spoiler-free fashion, want to have some complaints about how I feel like this game is trying to operate. But let's get into that. Okay, so first and foremost, if you have not played Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was the first part of this trilogy, what you gotta know is that this is an action RPG. It's very easy to dodge blows, do parries, block attacks, unleash big magic, but it's all constantly active. Your characters, whether you play as Red 13 or Tifa, the badass street brawler, playing as Barrett with his arm cannon, or of course the main character Cloud, everybody has a completely different fighting style. And going into Rebirth, there is so many characters to play as, and all of them are 100% different. Different specialities, their weapons give them different benefits, and of course, play style. I think the combat in general of this refines the already fun ideas established in Remake. This is a game where when you manage to stagger an enemy by hitting their weakness, trying to stack up damage with a limit break, or try and push somebody over the edge for a quick kill if it's a bunch of very poisonous swamp monsters. When you play this game good, it feels like you're actually good at the game. There's an old phrase I heard a very long time ago that I've always appreciated, which is easy to learn, tough to master. That's what this game is. 
even if you manage to put it on easy and just breeze through a lot of the more complicated things, this is a game that rewards you for actually going into talent trees and trying to figure out which teammates actually work better together. And that brings me to synergy attacks. I like the fact that in this game, the enemies are deadly. A lot of times the boss fights have multiple phases. A lot of enemies have specific tactics that you are intended to use against them. So it's cool that we now have an extra arsenal to use back. Leveling up your magic, which is called materia, can be done by grinding in fights, but you also just get straight up XP, more health, more attack power, more defense. But what extra feels good is when you and a teammate that you love the most. A person that's been staying in your party for this entire adventure. It's amazing to watch a particular person that you've just explored so much of this landscape with actually getting better visually, better actively, better at fighting with you. And that brings me to this interesting synergy attack system. So a lot of times if you have somebody with you and you have leveled up both of your different talent trees, you can actually do special super attacks that deal a ton of damage and a lot of times can even stagger enemies, which means they're going to take extra damage or even a lot of times makes it so they can't fight back. I think the combat in this game is definitely better, but the additional part of this is the tons of new traversal techniques. This is massive. I know I keep saying that, but no matter what word I say, Rebirth is bigger than you could possibly imagine. So many different zones from the grasslands to Cosmo Canyons to the freaking beaches of Casa de Sol to the freaking active different stuff up in the mountains of Corel. Every single zone is enormous. And it's not just you running around. You can climb rocks and stuff, but each of these characters actually has different traversal techniques. As you're playing through the game, you unlock grapple hooks and special abilities to jump up on rocks and new chocobos that are able to fly or scale mountains or go straight up walls. And so it's wild to me that playing the game, it's big, and the longer you spend in it, the bigger it gets. The amount of times where I would revisit an area and discover completely new stuff that wasn't just like optional, it, it felt so good and so mandatory. I think my favorite part of the world of Rebirth is the fact that everything is just so connected. Every side quest, every piece of dialogue, all of it feels completely intentional. Especially, I love all the dialogue trees. It's cool that we can actually talk to our friends and get special extra dates or question them about how they feel about particular events and it permanently changes it. Like you can say stuff to your friends that are positive and negative and it will alter how they interact with you for the rest of the game. What the heck? The depth of this is truly out of this world. I, I mean, I don't even know how the heck I'm going to do a second playthrough this or, or a third playthrough. I, I like to beat the Final Fantasy VII games over and over again, so I'm going to do it. But if every playthrough is 60 hours and I haven't even begun hard mode yet, it's truly a testament to just how much this game wants to be a living universe. Now, let's talk mini games. There is side activities all over the place in each and every zone we visit, whether they are major cities or just random environments, you're going to constantly be stumbling upon random activities. If you go to Gold Saucer, there's, of course, many games you can play there. There's dolphin racing. There's different dances. There's plays you can participate in. Holy heck. I like the fact that this game never feels stale. It feels like there is just so much going on that as soon as you begin to tire of the constant grinding or a particularly long fight or something like that, it's cool that they try to break up 
the pace of this with so many different mini games or forced character swaps because you're in a dungeon where only Kate Sith can go through a vent or maybe you're going through a spot where Yuffie is trying to scale some walls that only she can go up. I like the fact that this game, it doesn't feel afraid to kind of keep you outside your typical comfort zone. Everything about the gameplay in this is exactly what I hoped. Whereas the story, hmm, I like it. I don't love it. And there is a reason for that. So this is going to be completely spoiler free. But in general, if you've played Final Fantasy VII Remake, even the first game, you kind of know where this is going. We're trying to hunt down Sifroth. The whole goal of this, of course, is the fact that Cloud was once a soldier, and he's trying to track down his old mentor for a quest of revenge before he theoretically destroys the planet. And so I think the major plot beats in this are still just as sharp as they've been. I think a lot of the additional lore tidbits, they're all very, very good. My issue is how much they've changed. There is a lot of tone shifting. Moments that were incredibly dark, uh, they go a bit harder on trying to explain it. Chaotic moments are perhaps fleshed out so they make a bit more logical sense. But in this effort, it began to remind me of Star Wars. And I do mean this in a negative aspect, in that there have been now six Star Wars films. No, nine Star Wars films. That's right. God, I'm forgetting them. No, actually, wait, because there's all those other ones. There's all the freaking uh, ones that don't even have names. Okay, so there's a lot of Star Wars. And my issue is that as they keep establishing more Star Wars lore, they have to plug it into the gaps. You know, there's already so many different adventures of Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker and probably other Skywalkers and Chewbacca and stuff. And so every time they introduce a new show, a new character, a new prequel series, they have to plug it in between the existing events. So Dreamcast guy, what the heck are you talking about? Well, what I mean is that Rebirth adds in a lot of additional lore, new characters, new directions. And as good as they are, it does feel weird that they'll hit the necessary plot points and then try and plug the stiff in in between it. It is an effort that I think is successful. I don't think the story here is bad. It's just that some stuff feels purposefully drug out for absolutely no reason. Certain parts of the story, as fun as it is, as big as it is, they feel a bit gratuitous. There are times where you'll like fight your way into a trash heap and do a really long, drawn out, multi-phase boss fight and then get a 10 minute cutscene with a dramatic speech and then you walk out of there and then there is another boss fight that also has multiple phases and leads to a 20 minute cutscene. Now, none of this feels like it's badly paced. It's just that it is so big, it is so grandiose that at times I feel like it kind of overshadows itself. Every single time you go to the next zone, it completely tries to outdo itself. And I think you almost hit this diminishing returns at times. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that I am showing you a bunch of clips from the game itself, but this is all except for the last couple dungeons. So this, this is like 80% of the game right here that you're seeing a bunch of like out of context clips of. And as I'm sure you can tell, this is a very wide ranging adventure going from swamps to forests to jungles to wastelands to prisons to theme parks. I mean, the scope of this game is ginormous. But my thing is that at times with their obsession of constantly turning up the pressure, constantly trying to push these characters closer and closer to the edge, I think that it at times left me emotionally exhausted, where it felt like they could not possibly do more insanity. 
I like the story of the original FF7 because of how tight it is. Set up, payoff, set up, payoff. Every character has a full character arc of establishments, just finding out their bad inner demons and trying to solve their problems. Whereas in this one, there is so many people with so much going on, it feels, it doesn't feel sloppy, but it feels like too much. But this is just my thoughts as a person that understands all this lore. I think it's good. I think I'm going to appreciate this more on multiple playthroughs. I don't know if this is a fair thing to say, but I believe part of it is the fact that I just played 60 hours of this in a week. And as much as I loved it, I just feel like I got the most insane biblical story beamed into my freaking eyes until they bled. I think if I have a chance to beat this a couple more times and digest it more, I'll appreciate it more. But this first playthrough, the story almost felt like too much. But overall, it's been such a good time. <laughs> if you love Final Fantasy VII, you've probably already bought it. You've probably already beat it. But man, I like it. I'm definitely going to do multiple more runs of it. Um, I'm going to beat it on hard mode and get the platinum trophy, just like I did for all the other Final Fantasies, including uh, Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Of course, I did it for the Final Fantasy VII re-release, and I did it for Remake. But man, I have hundreds of hours left with this game. So now I have to do the difficult task of going over to the ratings board and putting a big number on it. I am giving Final Fantasy VII Rebirth a 9 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. And I appreciate the love on this. I realize I'm putting this video out really late, but I told myself because of the whole uh, parental passing away thing, I told myself that I would not rush through this game. I wanted to play through it at my own pace and absorb it and really have a chance to appreciate it. And I'm glad I did. I still binged the hell out of it, but I definitely am glad that I got a chance to really uh, sit there and bask in the beauty of it. Thank you for watching. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, you guys rock and uh, keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.